Happy Thursday. I'm back. You're going to get all sinused up, Cal, today. This is the second shoot because I just had a massive sneezing attack. And so everything in my sinuses has just been blown to the front of my face. Um, I'm back in my spot watching a, uh, I think, waning moon. It sounds like Elmer Fudd in front of our chocolate lake because of the apartment complexes that are being built next door. So all of their topsoil is running into our pond. It looks like it's from Willy Wonka. I want to put a big, giant plastic tube in there and then just form an Augustus gloop that's getting sucked up into it. I think we're stuck with the chocolate pond for a while. <clears throat> trying to recover. <laughs> um, I have two sons, both in their 30s. We both share um, the five person on the uh, personality on the Enneagram, which is the investigator. That is, if I don't know something, um, I'm going to look it up. I'm one of those that, that when we stream a show, I'm on IMDb and Wikipedia going like, oh, this really happened, and this person was in this thing. And we all share that me that same like desire to know more and we're constantly reading and listening to podcasts. And so we have a text thread that's just the three of us. Janet finds it annoying. Where we're constantly sharing content with each other. This memes, article links, podcasts, things that quotes that we find. And it's not very conversational. Like we don't ask how each other's doing in this text. We're just sharing content. And so um Joshua, my oldest, uh, dropped this in the thread just a few days ago, obviously because it hit him, and um, I'm sharing it because it's stuck with me also. Um, he did his PhD at UNC in, believe it or not, contemporary Christian music, and so he did a lot of studying back in the day doing the anthropological, anthropological, I can't say it. I'm not going to try to say it. Sociological aspects of contemporary Christian music. And Crowder was, David Crowder was one of the ones that he studied. And so he sent me um, lyrics to Crowder's first song on his first album, and it's called I Need Words. And it's just still sitting on me because it kind of addresses what we're going to talk about this Sunday in worship. <clears throat> This is how the first part of the song goes. I need words as wide as the sky, and I need a language large as the longing inside. And I need a voice bigger than mine, and I need a song to sing to you that I've yet to find. And I guess what Crowder is expressing in there is that there's this thing inside of him that's longing for not only connection, but for understanding and for this pursuit of, of something meaningful and powerful that he knows that there's even greater out there. I don't know if you have this thing inside of you that drives. A lot of times we try to feed it with things that don't really matter. <clears throat> I don't like to use scripture as a beat down. Like, what's wrong with you? Why don't you fix yourself? Um, but I think this song kind of points to something in scripture that we do have this thing inside of us that knows that there's more out there, that's longing for more, that wants more. We just have a tendency to chase things that seem in the moment to, to meet that need. But in the long run, we find them to be disappointing and confining. In fact, that's what I shared with Joshua in response to that. I think this is the whole purpose that Jesus came was to say that thing inside of you that's searching that that has questions that wants not necessarily always answers <clears throat> but just understanding um, was placed inside of us to help us find God um, God said he put himself in all of creation so if we search for 
meaning to these things that we have inside of us, we're going to find things that begin to answer some of the questions that we have. We won't answer all of them. We won't have complete understanding. We know that. And so when Jesus came, he, he said, I've come to bring you life. Um, he called it eternal life. We're going to break that word down this Sunday. Um, we have a tendency to just kind of like put that in this tight little box and just say, <clears throat> God came to save us from hell and so that we could go to heaven. But there's a lot of teaching that surrounds it, kind of fills in that understanding. But I don't think Jesus just meant that. That's a little box that we put it in. And what it does is it shortchanges us from experiencing this life, finding meaning and purpose and answers um, to satisfy that, that curiosity, that longing inside of us. And so like David Crowder expressed, I need words. I need a song. I, I need something that'll answer this. Jesus says, I've come to give you that. Don't put it in this little box and say it's only this and set it on a shelf and just wait until you can cash in your retirement. That there's this life that we're supposed to have now that is vibrant and full and meaningful and has purpose. That doesn't mean everything's going to be easy. It just means that in those difficult times, there's going to be something that holds us in place when we're in the midst of that struggle. And that was really important to Jesus. And that's what we're going to talk about this Sunday. Um, we, we've talked about the lost being important to Jesus. Uh, Kristen, this past Sunday, talked about the least of these, those that, the way that our society works kind of pushes to the margins or labels or deems unworthy. Um, are important. And, and this one is that what's very important to Jesus is for us to live the fullest life that we can. And so, this Sunday is going to be super nerdy, um, so brace yourself for it. Um, but hopefully it will answer some of the questions that you might have. And if it doesn't, give you some tools that you can begin the search for your own answers. So, join us this Sunday. I'm excited to be back. Uh, we will have after party. Um, I, everything you need to know is on, on a, all of our social medias. Um, I see all of you um, logging in on Sunday through Facebook, uh, YouTube, and, and the app. So appreciate you joining us. So I'm going to continue to enjoy uh, the Chocolate Factory finish my coffee, and uh, I'll see you Sunday. Take care.